You are listening to the Global Psychosis Network. existed since the emergence of hip-hop. Starting from the Roxanne Wars in the mid-1980s to the East Coast West Coast feud during gangster rap's peak in the early 90s to today's current TMZ-fueled feuds amongst pop stars. However, there is one feud that has seemingly been off the radar. A battle between two rapping juggernauts that never made it to mainstream airwaves, yet the feud between these two is deep-seated and bad-blooded dating back as early as 2003. The rivalry in which I'm speaking of is the battle between Radican and Elive. Two underground, unknown MCs who went to war against one another, diss for diss, tit for tat, and in the end, only one man could claim victory. But who started it? What caused it? Why did it begin? All these answers and more will be discussed in this documentary of Radican vs. Elive. How stretch marks developed. It wasn't caused from weight gain. It wasn't caused from weightlifting. It was caused by a rapper by the name of Radican and his freestyle verse on a newly acquired MPC 2000. The rest, they say, is history. I was trying to tell him, yo, let's battle or whatever, get him started just for fun, and he didn't want to do it. So one day I ended up in his garage. He had a bunch of his friends there. Uh, we had, I uh, finally, like, I coaxed him into battling me. Like, I said a couple little things, and then he thought he was smart. He came back, you know? I used to record my shit on Eli's 10 track. I would go over to my buddy, his younger brother, Mike B's house, and I would record all my tracks there. So, one day, I loaned my 10 track to my little brother and Jason so they could do their little raps or whatever, and I come back, and I pop on my 10 track. I'm listening to the stuff that they had did, and this beat comes on that his homie Danny had made. I was recording some tracks there, and then I don't know, we got drunk and um, started kicking freestyles, and then I just thought it would be funny, because I knew I knew that Eli would listen to my tracks, because we did stuff together all the time, and I listened to his tracks too, you know? And um, I knew that he would take it home and listen to see what I did, so I threw a freestyle on there, just fucking with him, just making fun of him, you know what I mean? Just kind of, just just so that he would listen, because I recorded a couple of tracks, he would like, go through them all. Like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, this is kind of tight, this is kind of tight. Oh, I like his B.O. And then all of a sudden I'd be dissing him, you know, and it would just be funny. One of them was this operator track, which funny enough, I was an operator at the time, and I would have thought that I made the beat myself. I think I had an idea for an operator song, so Jason thought that, uh, I made that beat, apparently, by his lyrics. And he's talking about, like, I'm jerking off on the phone and shit, you know, it was pretty fucking funny. I, I still, to this day, I like to think he prepared it, but this shit might have been freestyle as fuck. I wasn't, like, trying to start a battle with him when it, when it first went down. I was just really trying to just fuck with him. I laced my, Jason is giggling at the end, I dropped a beat, I rap over it and drop Stretch Marks Part 1, and I press the CD, give it to all of our friends, and tell Michael, you know, start emailing that shit around. Basically, that's how it started, I guess. I can't get a thing on the radio. Doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. I can't get a thing on the radio. Doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. Huh. I can't get a thing on the radio. Doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. Can't get a thing on the radio. Make sense. I don't understand it. Yo, 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 operator, operator. Yo, well, Eddie is an operator. When fat men are on the phone, you can just call him the phone masturbator because that's what he does. He jerks off over the phone and. 
tells him that man he's all alone at about five to seven if the fat guy wants to stop by cause Eddie would really like to put a little jizz inside his eye and maybe a little bit of cock inside his ass but I tell him Eddie really don't be down like that please no I don't like to hear about it in your flow but if you listen it's all subliminal all you gotta do is listen to that song Junkie Junkie was Eddie's first hit when, when everyone heard Junkie that was wow the, the 10 track and the beat machine are all worth it and I don't think he'll ever get any fame not with tattoos man he fucked up my arm he committed me serious bodily harm yeah it's just funny JP was one of the first like technically first people that Eddie tattoos that was the beginning of what I think made Eddie go oh what the fuck I, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna destroy this kid Gone. Gone, sort of like any skill. I think he might be addicted to pills. Right there, he talks about how um, Eddie might be addicted to pills. I remember listening it over with Extra Live, and and when that part came up, just the the oh, I'm addicted to pills. Truly rad again. I don't understand what's going on here. Stretch marks. Let me see those stretch marks. I know you got enough for all of us. Stretch marks. Yo, Jason. Yo. Stretch marks across your chest. Reminiscent of the days when Jason had some breasts. Bigger than my chicks. JP's got a lot of friends. All of them think he's a dick. That's why, why, why. Two out of three, three ID. Radicane and, and our boy Rescue and Agent, that's where three IDs came from, that was their group. The reason why they're not around today is, you know, I'm not going to say it's because Radicane. I had to do with the other members, to be honest, fully, but it was funny that, you know, he did that out there and he put the collapse of those two great groups on, on Radicane. His job is done when it's only half-assed, and he ain't saying shit when he's mumbling, that's why he rap fast. The geekiest greet you could ever seek and find, I guess so how when Tet and Jason, I may as well be blind, but the stretch marks don't help when you've got so damn many, you're guaranteed to well, yo. When I'm running over stretch marks, you're guaranteed to well, scar, ankle bleed out. It was one of the fastest responses in history of battle rap, probably like um, within five hours I had him his part two response and uh, in that same five hours, I actually recorded part two and part three at the same exact time. After I did that freestyle, uh, Eli's brother had told me that uh, he wrote some diss back or whatever, and I kind of just giggled, shrugged it out, like, oh shit, Dad, I don't want to hear it, you know? And it was just like fun and games to me, right? Fun and games, you know what I mean? Just like, didn't even, still not a battle in my mind, nothing like that. And then all of a sudden, like, before I ever got a chance to get down there and hear it, like, five, six different people are like telling me like, oh, oh, fucking, you got a battle going on. Like, Eli fucking said this, oh, blah, blah. I'm like, what, what? I almost felt, I was obligated to write something back, basically. I mean, like, it was basically like, people were like, basically would be like, basically telling me that I would be a bitch if I didn't write something back. It took about, I'd say three weeks, maybe two and a half, well, I'll say three weeks, three and a half weeks, and I got the response to stretch marks and, uh, I think it might be called Do the Dishes, and it was, it, it's real life story, it's good, <laughs> you have some truth in there, I was doing the dishes when he probably wrote that line. The reason I came back again is because at that point, like, I felt obligated to be like, oh, what, like, I was just fucking around, I didn't even show anybody, and now, like, and now, and I don't even think Eli was trying to show fucking people. I think it was his brother, Mike B, who was my friend too, my good friend. And um, like, so basically he instigated the whole shit. To me, it's my favorite one of the three that he dropped. And if I had to give him any round being the egomaniac I am, I might slight him round two because my, my round two was just, it was kind of going light. Hello, Eddie. That was a uh, cute little thing you put together. I liked it a lot. Stretch marks! I got stretch marks on my dick. You wanna see him? You fucking skinny fag. Eli, yo, 
check it, yo. You say I'm out of shape, I say let's have a race And see who passes through the Ten. tape, your wax statement's out of place Hey man, this week where's your home? How many people work at Pac Bell and don't have a phone? I know one we can see by, now you see why They all delete Eli from their C drives Let's look at his name and see what we find Well he's by. the E stands for erotic, he's erotic live And if you log on his website, he's giving head to guys Yeah, you won't believe your eyes His favorite tattoo is on Mr. Murder's inner thighs Surprise, Ellen John gave him a rise You look like Andy Dick with tattoos You think you can serve your master? Well, I got bad news Eddie Rudy's a damn fool Won't tat rescue Cause you're afraid you know who might smack you too He live ended up tatting rescue And he had this fat octopus that they call his shoulder and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. But somebody ended up getting jacked for, for a lot of weed what ended up happening is that certain people got pulled into the middle of it. It really had nothing to do with Extra Live, Radican, even having anything to do with Rescue. It kind of led to a situation where certain people didn't want to be around each other, certain people didn't want to talk to each other. It, it was a lot of bad blood, and it was legitimately true, and maybe out of all the things that were said in this battle, that line right there was probably the most... Uh, I'm here to skinish, like, uh, maybe you shouldn't have said it. Reply with snores. You're getting served. You won't survive like the Thailand shores. Service. Lyrical tsunami. Have a good day. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> Please reply. <laughs> Stretch marks. On my dick. Give him a lick. Man, feels like I just heard do the dishes for the first time, you know? <laughs> it's pretty funny because I actually worked at the phone company for a long time, did not own the phone, did not own a phone for about a week, and I swear Jason hopped on it, it happened to be this week he was recording. <laughs> man, he got me good, he was, like I said, I, was, I do dishes a lot, man, I don't like dirty dishes, I fucking do them, and you know, <laughs> I, I tried to pull out some shit, you know, from the fucking cupboard about, uh, just, shit that I knew would like jab him stab him like just for him you know and so like I say something in there about like don't get stabbed with a fork because when he was a kid he got in like a fight with his little brother and his little brother couldn't win obviously because he was his little brother and the gap is large when you're young and so his little brother stabbed him with a fork. One of his best lines in it, I think, at the very, very end, he mentions the Thailand shores, and that's a very good reference to the time period, because if you go and Google that, you can definitely see whatever year it was. That's on point. Like, that rhyme was two weeks after the Thailand shores shit. It's a good song, but, I mean, if I spent a fucking month working on a song, you know, <laughs> I would think that I'd be able to write it decent, too, but, you know. I give Jason credit, he could have wrote it in six hours as well as 30 days too, you know? Because the first one was freestyle. I think maybe I wrote like the beginning of the first one, but the majority of it was freestyle, but the second one was all written. And I was trying to get in there with some like personal shit so that he would, you know, respect the uh, fact that I was digging deep into like real shit and then also trying to rhyme it, you know, and I mean, I, I liked it, I thought it was funny. Stretch marks, pop motherfucking too, man. Come to a town near you, letting you know. It all started off, Dustin bought an MP3. Jason said that he would throw down and use the shit for free. Man, he never paid a fee, not three red cent. And I think the, uh, at this time the NPC 2000 or 3000, I forget, just came out and they wanted that so badly and they, they threw down and I think Diddy and Radican had some kind of agreement that, that Diddy had the money at the time and that Radican would end up giving him money for half of it or something and Diddy was like, I'll pay for half of it, it's cool in the end, just, you know, give me some money for it. And ended up what happening is, you know, Radican didn't, couldn't afford it. I, I mean, I don't know. Can't record no more since homies took their apparatus pad. He might get smacked over stupid cheaty spit. I know we stayed up for weeks right now, the first he went. It's kind of funny. Jason's down as fuck with rap, but never will throw down no money. And it's true, I used to call. 
But Jason didn't ever want to let me do my thing at all Was he scared or unprepared? Try to step to me? I really can't believe he cared I heard he used to eat his own shit out his pants That part jumps out at him to eat your own shit out his pants and apparently, Extra Live got some kind of hidden information from Adar. I guess they grew up on the same block as Radican when they were really, really young. They were out playing one day and he crapped his pants or something. I don't know if he just wiped his hand in his pants and licked the poop or something. Or, or he was eating full logs like candy bars. But I'm telling you right now, Adar1 will swear on it. That one right there was actually sample from a Tampax commercial. Everything in that song was true. I would testify to it in court, you know? In my last track before this one, I mentioned about how you fuck my tattoo up, right? It's just like an inside joke, I'm fucking with them. Because there's like a little bit of like, the line isn't quite straight right here. True reason is, is because I do have stretch marks right here, you know? So, I don't know, I pretty much set myself up for that shit, but I don't think I thought of it at the time, I just was kind of just, just trying to fucking poke fun at him. And then he came back and talked about the reason he just can't tattoo over his stretch marks, what the fuck you think it's gonna scar. Well, you know, at the beginning I'm just talking about I'm mispronouncing MP3 with MPC. At, at the time, uh, I spit it wrong on the thing, I knew the difference and like a dummy, I just got through the whole thing, like first or second uh, take because like I said I gave it back in two hours in five hours I have part two and part three recorded so I didn't want to have to spit the whole fucking thing again I thought I was gonna be able to edit it a little bit better than I did I gave him the 10 track to record his part two his part three uh, in the fun of the sport even told my brother like go ahead give him some material I knew I knew all Jason's friends so I have a lot of material on them every day they came over there giving me new material so I just uh, I basically like told my brother, you know, just don't tell him anything too bad, I hope <laughs> that you don't have nothing too bad on me and just let Jason run with it, you know, because I know that he'll make it real funny and I, I, don't, I don't mind being made the butt of a good joke. This diss on your own shit. Check it out. Diss on your own shit. I might as well be shitting on your couch. This is the diss on your own shit. You can't turn me away from rapping on your shit. I'm too good, man. You were too whack to come to my garage, dude. We had a fucking, we had a screening, dude. You didn't pass the test. <laughs> Yo. I'll beat you up in raps like in front of Mickey's when Burl Street whipped your ass and you ran crying to the bathroom. Way back when you only had like one whack tattoo. Stretch marks part two just makes me laugh at you. I think it's funny how you called the NPC an MP3 and tried to fix it with your dubs. You can't trick me. I know you're really confused and dumb. Don't worry, Eli, right I can. We'll give you a lesson. Hip Hop 101. It's fun to serve a cat that thinks he's good, but is whack. You got crap in the place of flows. Here, Eddie catches football. This time, don't break your nose. <laughs> Eli wanted me to play catch with the football with him in the backyard when we were living in Torrance. He wanted to be like fancy, so he got on a trash can and he just he laid down on the trash can like planking. But I hucked the football and I hit him right in the nuts. He basically clinched his nuts in pain and the trash can just swooped down on the floor and he just fell face first. He broke his nose from the fall. Yeah, people still make fun of him for that. And that's where that comes from. I've been lyrically taking it in the butt. This to me, you get ripped. Yeah, it's highly likely. I didn't throw down on equipment. Yeah, that might be. But I'm also not bumming money off of my B and trying to pay him back with spare shake of my weed. They were using me and a lot of it. And the only reason why is because I'm the connection between the two of them. I had decent money and I was just going out blowing it on booze and and fun and dope weekends. And so, you know, I, I let Eddie Ball at the time, you know, it wasn't even a lot of money. It'd be here and there would give me herb back 
as payment and that was great for me because I would have been spending it on that anyways at the time you want or you might as well drink some milk from your mama's breast don't ever forget why you know what a 10 track is because Radic can held your hand taught you that's the fact kid that's the fact kid just let it sink in real quick why Eddie knows anything about anything that is called I didn't let you do your thing at all, that's the only truth you spit And that's because I didn't want any whackness on my shit And the fact is, this attacking is actually just rapping practice For real MCs that want to step real MCs that are worth half my breath And you never serve me cause I'm a hundred times I've been spitting skill Eddie, I'll call you again the next time I need another bitch to kill Eddie, I'll call you again to feed your skinny ass a meal Eddie, Rudy is what I was five years ago, not the real deal Hello, Eddie thinks I'm a dick But he eats all Caitlyn's ice cream, what's the real the chin strap was a popular thing and everyone in the area knew all about it. This guy went to the next step. It wasn't like your regular beard. Like, you know, those are cool long beards. He completely shaved all of his face down to his chin. There's no hair anywhere. And it was just this, this strain of hair from one side burned to the other underneath each other. And it was classic. And he did it for a long time. And he, this is the chin strap. Everyone talks shit about it, but in the end, everyone talked about it. It's funny because there was a lot of shit that was like real personal. Like I talk about Burl Street beating his ass in front of Mickey's. If you're local and you know that's down in Hermosa, you know who Brill Street is. I mean, I believe the story is that they actually won that fight, but obviously I wasn't gonna put that in a diss track. So he got his ass kicked as far as I'm concerned. Again, you know, it took two, three weeks for him to come with that. It was cool, you know. I, You know, maybe that one was a little quicker. If the first one was three weeks, that one might've been two weeks or some, something like that, I think. I think in my head when I wrote this, I was trying to pull out shit it wasn't it really wasn't the kind of like battle that was about like appeasing like other people it was more like for me like i'm gonna try to like make you be like oh shit he got me you know what i mean like 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 a game of snaps you know yeah he's saying some funny stuff on there it's pretty cool like i don't you know i might have ate you know someone's ice cream or something i don't really know you know but <laughs> on the course i say some weird shit i'm like Oh, Eli thinks I'm a dick, but he eats all Caitlyn's ice cream. Who's the real prick? Caitlyn was his ex-girlfriend's daughter, and uh, one time she came home, and she wanted ice cream so fucking bad, but fucking Eli had gotten so fucking stoned, he ate all her fucking ice cream and never bought her anymore, and she comes there, and she's fucking crying for her fucking ice cream. Oh, uh, uh, what ice cream? And then Eli just says nothing to fucking, I mean, what a dick, right? I mean, what a dick. I, like, to me, you know, it was uh, it wasn't his best performance. At the end of the track, I have some shit where I'm like, oh, you look at some of some of his own skill. Like, when I listen to that now, it like it makes me cringe because the rhymes aren't that good to me now. And I think what I was trying to do was like flex some like like rapping speed, but it's just not fast and not that good. I mean, this is like 10 years ago, you know. So like me now, when I listen to it, I'm just like. Oh. Yeah, dude, I really was trying to impress people with that. I think my part three is a little bit stronger. Again, like I said, I made the beat. At this point, I guess, at the end of it, I pretty much felt like uh, he was gonna come back with one more. It had the better material when I gathered all my material for part two and part three. I used a couple of my zingers, like the sheet shit one, a couple things like in that first one, but this one had the majority of the material that I had saved up for Jason and uh, you know, I, I just, once I dropped it, I just expected it to keep going on and on. But like, I knew it was kind of getting old. We were having fun with it or whatever, but it was like, it was already coming to a head. What up, Mike, man? Call up your brother, ask if you could use the 10 track. No one else will let me use their shit anymore. The final stretch. Stretch. Extra live. Verbally, I hit you with the iron claw. Jack your ass for more than 20 bucks. I'm not Richard Shaw. I think Radican got in this little phase where 
he was trying to slang some weed. Someone we know, you heard it in the song. Uh, I guess jacked him for a gram. You should go to Big Daddy's, get your arm color black in fact, you can't afford it. And I'm the sole reason Jason's solo album got recorded. Man, I hope it's understood. This ex fat kid from Berkeley ain't rhyming no good. Might tell me why your buddy love me. And I'd be mad if my master was just rapping under study. Red a can, my number one fan has his lips wrapped around my dick as tightly as it can. Get a bet I can make him drop his new crew if I ran up on him like day two through the fake. I see the fake that tried to hide inside. Jason never tell you any different. He lied. Korea suicide. He thinks that he came tight when in fact I have to tell him how to spit his shit out right. And it's a joke. If Eddie Rudy's hooked on pills and Jason must be doing coke, a smoking rock. I heard the best MC from 3ID was right there on your block. The the best MC from 3ID was right there on your block, or, or whatever that line went. That's EJ. Adams every single Tuesday night and pray. And since he got cocaine, nowadays that's all he say. He better get some new material before we end up on the back of the box. So with my cereal, I'm sick. Final stretch. If just a needle was some maids and let it stick in a prick. I'm rude as Rick. Please awake. Final stretch, a lesson in geek disology. I had mentioned uh, selling them 0.7 for 20 bucks and that was like, again, I was still in the middle of that verse and uh, writing this shit and Jason came over with like Dustin and a couple other people that were going away for the weekend and like, they were like, I need a gram. So I fucking, uh, I shorted them and gave them 0.7 just to drop it in the song because I thought that shit would be funny. <laughs> so I started going to Bible study, but basically because I really like this chick and she went to Bible study and I didn't admit that at the time, but everyone knew that. At least my friends did, and, and Eli knew that. And uh, <laughs> so he says, you better go to Bible study every Tuesday night and pray, because literally that's what I was doing. But not to be him, because I don't need to pray for that. My, my second big punch in there was, boom, Jason got knocked out in New Newport by some old man. And I think that story came from Mike B or Brent Corkin, one of them characters. and. You know, they had went down there to like visit Michael Basics or some whoever rich kid they knew down there and they got into a fight and some 50 year old man lit Jason up, boom, put him on his back out cold. At this point, I guess I thought like, I guess I counted my freestyle. I realized because I had like gotten conversations with people, it was like, it was like three verse three or whatever. So I just figured, boom, it's done, you know, whatever. I mean, personally, I mean, rappers, I'm a rapper, right? I mean, we're arrogant, we're arrogant as shit. I thought I won, I was like, my shit was better. My three were better even though my first one was a freestyle that even makes it cooler and i thought that i had won at this point not by a large margin i liked his shit too but um i figured it was over i had a feeling he wasn't going to respond we had kind of talked about it someone mentioned something in passing and he was like oh we got a truce you know and uh that comes in in stretch marks part four i, I make mention of that truth as i'm breaking the truth because <laughs> i just i felt like doing it i was using his digital 10 track to record and i was trying to work on a cd and i was i left him a voicemail saying like because I, I couldn't get a hold of him i texted him a couple times I was like, dude, like, what's up? Let me buy all the 10 track, but I'm pretty sure he set my ass up. He probably got all my texts. He's just waiting for the voicemail so he can put that shit on blast, you know? And he did. He blasted my shit. Yo, Eddie, what up? It's Jason. I just want to see what the status was and possibility of going over to your house and recording some tracks or bringing the 10 track over here to my uh, living room. And, uh, because I got a couple of freaking tracks that I want to get on, uh, that I've been sitting on for a little bit. So, it will be extreme help if you just hit me back and let me know what's up. So, yeah, I'm going to see. End of
Message to delete this message. Press 7 to save it. Message to it. So help me reform California so that together we can rebuild it. He basically torched me on the fact that he had all my shit like I recorded all my shit on his shit and he used all my beats like from so tracks that I had, songs that I had and just ripped over them and then sampled my lyrics and shit. I mean it was just like a production of just like ass fuck is, is how I felt. I felt I've never been ass fucked but I imagine it feels something like what happened <laughs> with that song. <laughs> couldn't resist the urge because now like I knew what I had had I had all Jason's raps some of his songs on my shit so I went through sampled uh, sampled a lot of his verses even like on just a lot of my subtle words Jason's doing the dubs on it throughout the whole song he's saying pow bang boom all this stuff in the background he's on my hook you know saying singing the E live knows how to rock which was off of one of his songs that he shouted me out because he knows the truth deep in his heart that I know how to crack rock homie people were hitting me up to like come back on it and I was just like what am I gonna do maybe like I could have done a video or something and I could have got a long haired tattooed faggot to like impersonate E live and then I could have you know butt fucked him to like get back at him but I didn't do that, so I'm pretty sure I lost after this, but it was a little bit of a low blow in my book. I wanted to do the thing with him on my dubs and him on my hook, so I had to release it, like, even though he was like, oh, it's cool, and we got a little, a little truce going on or whatever, uh, I was right there in the room, like, I was writing my shit as he said that, and it went in my song. And now it's time to bring up the headliner of the evening, very special Welcome to the stage. I can't stop, I never will. Whip it out, blow a spill. A killer kid for real. I'm still the only rapper worth a mill. And cold hard dick on the track. Who's the bitch? I'm a smack. Attract him by the truck. Have him stalking me and fuck. It sucks to be alive. Making rappers take a dive. Head first on their face when I strive to replace the hope. With my hands like a rope around the neck. Demand respect verbally. You heard of me. Rhyming so superbly. It's supernatural. I'm sick. Habitually never let you go without the mix. Hurt your feelings, prick Let the steroids stick in your veins It won't work Don't waste your money on the M1T I don't know if any of you guys know what M1T is But it's some kind of shot Maybe not a shot I think it was a shot though It's some kind of form of steroid you take And it was when he was trying to get bigger Because we know someone who took it And they got yoked out of their mind The, the salt thing It has to do with something when we were... I can't remember if high school or not, but if it wasn't high school, it was right out. And he rolled up on some fool, and I think he got sucker punched or whatnot, but he got dropped. And there was a lot of them. Nobody helped him. And I didn't know what was going on. I was in the back, I remember. And nobody helped him, and he rushed this group of people, and he got dropped, and, and he got stomped on, and he's probably still fucked up today from it. Like, God, tell me one more time, man, please. What's my name? Yeah. I want the whole world to know. Yes, it's true. Even since French War II, Jason wrote, he needs to lose weight. Stand and hate on the E. I try to fight physically, cause mentally I be equal to the IV. Give your blood. Try to blow up and end it up a dud. The way it does it dirty. Have your friends laughing at ya. Everybody hurt me. JP, you're not worthy. You don't know me. Love it. Fucking fat boy, Jay can't lose Even on his feet, he needs to buy wider shoes Extra lab, I can't snooze Man, you never catch me snoring You're on my dick now But before my shit was boring I'm scoring with the sloppy shot Jason gave me Brandon's 20 bucks For .7 in pot I'm hot, it's heat A mile from the sun If extra lab did not exist You would be rhyming none I know it's cool to freak you like a slut The S&M 3, my whole kept the mouth shut I hate to break your truce Just to let you know my nuts are big and hairy as a moon
football. Get off my dick. Oh yeah, baby. That's how we're doing it tonight. What about you? Everybody give it up. Stupid. We got a special yeah. guest in the house. Be Let me hear it for him. Everybody put your hands in the air. I'm bumping all the fill steadily Evil Eddie B, money making murderous Killing rappers on the track with one twist on my wrist When I went, when he spit, this shit was cool But other than the fact he should've kept his ass in school Hey yo, on whiskey, I think he tried to copy me But you couldn't really tell because he did it sloppily and crappily Just like his newest hits will be I forget happily and properly Not even time to stop me, it's about that time Fuck puffing on some weed, I'm smoking Jason like a dime it's about that time, it's about that time, yo It's about 420 on the song, so break out your bongs, lighters Walk with up for J, in memory Yo, check it I'm hurting for a hit, bro, basically I'm dying If I say Jason has a tag, you know that I'm lying Crying that he doesn't want to get too high And for life, not the type of guy to purchase it or buy The shit that he's selling, telling me he's gonna leave University, I really can't believe uh. seems rehearsed to me And Ace is hitting up his sleeve He wanna flee the Golden State but never will achieve His goal to rat a reach I'd see Like that time he tried spitting false facts about the E Man you can't diss the operator uh, man The whack verse retaliator MC annihilator You hip hop educator Keep some catering your knees Fuck with me and bleed I have you dying on your knees And now we're back to where it all started Fresh. My heart won I left you dearly departed you never started it I dropped two and three before you did your last piece of shit You dumb fuck I stab you with the butter knife Pull a young buck So suck dicks Stretch mark part four We're in the mix Don't hate I know you love this shit To me it wasn't all that great Cutting it up like this Come on man I had him on the hook saying Eli knows how to rock. I had him doing my dubs the whole song. I had him doing the beatbox. We went through all the beats. I went through a bunch of his beats that he didn't even know that I had. He was getting ready to drop the songs like they were fresh new songs. He hadn't realized that he left the CD in my thing. I went, gave it back. He didn't realize I had taken the three things from his newest shit, so that was dropped on there before his songs even dropped. I have to say I think Eli beat me because I don't really know what the next level is. You know what I mean? He took it beyond just rapping lyrics, you know what I mean? Like. I don't think I could have came with a sick enough just like lyrics over a beat that could have defeated that and I honestly couldn't think of really what I, like what I was capable of doing on a production level and like I mean he took it like it was like like we were fighting in 2D and then he fucking started fighting in 4D you know like I was a regular person walking in the matrix and he kneeled up you know like I don't really know what I could have done because it, I feel like he took it to another it's like fighting with sword a knife someone bringing a gun to a knife fight you know what I mean like and I didn't have a gun all I had was a knife my knife was fucking better than his though I knew that there was really no response to that because he didn't have any more material on me he had used all of his material up to that point I mean maybe we should do a round two maybe we should what's up you know don't be pulling out none of that production shit because you're too afraid about how shitty your lyrics are nowadays uh, Jason probably just has too much material on me. Why not just go beats, I mean CD beats and written lyrics, I mean fuck, freestyle lyrics if you want, nah, written lyrics is more fun, let's do that. It's not hard to dig up dirt on me and to say some pretty funny stuff, I'm getting older, you know what I'm saying? But we can freestyle too. Either way, keep it fair this time dude, just I mean keep it fair. And so, it went down in history as one of the most epic battles of all time. Two MCs who gave it their all, putting it all on the line for the coveted title of winner. It will now forever be hallmarked in the annals of time.
but who won? Well, some people think that Radican won by lyrical content, while others think Elive had the victory in his back pocket from the get-go with his masterful plan. Nonetheless, a battle between these two proved to be entertaining and something the public would like to see again. But will it? Only time will tell. You are listening to the Global Psychosis Network.